Good afternoon. I've been working for three months in a elementary school, a public school in Florida, in my county. And I wanted to relay my experiences, um, especially for those who have children in public schools. I was hired as a translator for the ESOL program, which means um, English for students of other languages. So basically, I was told I would be translating. I seem to be doing a lot of other things there besides translating, and I recently um, looked at my my schedule and went over it in my mind of how much time I was spending doing and dif doing different things, and I found to my surprise that I was actually translating to the um, Spanish language students who are learning English. I was translating for them and helping them to learn English for actually 15 minutes a day. Now, my job was seven hours a day, and you're thinking, what was I doing with the rest of that time, the six hours and 45 minutes? So I was babysitting for teachers while they went and had lunch. I was in their room. I was sitting in the corner holding a big uh, plastic garbage bag watching the students eat lunch. They usually were seeing a movie while they were eating. And I would sit there, and when they finished, they would come and throw out their trays in the bag. So I was doing that for, for two teachers. And the rest of the time in the other classes, I was helping English speakers, native English speakers, with English, so that's not what I was hired for. And I was also eventually made a school crossing guard in a deserted area in back of the school. And I was also in the mornings and afternoons helping students um, get out of their parents' car, open the door for them, or, or in the afternoon, get in their parents' car, open the door for them. And um, I started thinking, well, this these schools are receiving money from our property taxes to teach um, Spanish language speakers English, not just speaking it, but reading and writing. Now, most of the ESOL students I was, I was with daily, they spoke English very well. They, um, most of them actually wrote it and read it well also. So, like I said, the 15 minutes I was spe spending with the two little girls in the second grade, um, they spoke English pretty good, and they had trouble reading and writing it. But that's just two girls, and that's just 15 minutes a day. So as I was saying, this school is receiving money to, to pay my salary um, to work with, with the ESOL students. And I know that the... Uh, the school allows each of these students to be in the ESOL program for two years, but if only a small portion of the student actually, students actually need it, then they shouldn't be they should be graduated from the program sooner than the two years, or else they are receiving this funding. Um, without really using it so it seems to me to be illegal so that's that's just one of the problems I was counting today 
the 17 staff members that I had contact with daily. Now, there's many more staff members in the school. It's a large school, but um, I was not in every class. I did not even meet every teacher in the school and did not even meet um, all the staff members. So out of these 17 people that I had contact with daily, I was counting how many of them I considered to be nice, well-educated, well-intentioned, and ethical people. And out of the 17, I could only come up with four. And that is very distressing to me as I love children and I the idea that they are in in these public schools um, with basically they're with strangers you know it's not home that's okay if everyone was great but four people out of 17 I'm, I'm, I find that frightening um, now what what were wrong with the 13 people that I didn't think were nice, well-educated, well-intentioned, and ethical people. Well, <clears throat> some of them were, were yelling at the students um, in very angry, frightening ways. And some of the kids were crying. And um, many of these people, although they wore a mask, um, you know, they had a mask on. They'd walk around like this with their nose uncovered. One of the teachers one day, she was so angry at the student, she went over to his desk, pulled her mask completely off, and was shouting at him in his face, you know, like, maybe 12 inches away from his face and he, he was just stunned he just just sat there so um, I haven't even mentioned uh, the lack of cleanliness there most of the rooms in the school have carpeting now we know how carpeting holds bacteria not good bacteria either um, the harmful bacteria and I've seen students you know like, you know, vomiting, spitting up, you know, bleeding. I mean, it all goes in this carpet now. They don't clean the carpets every day. Also, some of the teachers just let their students, um, you know, like sit on the floor instead of their desk, you know, for, for a change or, or just for a novelty. Um, uh, there, there are bathrooms in each classroom. But there's no sink in the, in, the, in the bathrooms, in the classroom. They have to come out of a small hall, hallway, touch the door handle, and go to a sink to wash their bathroom hands inside the classroom. I mean, every kind of possible problem that exists with trying to stay clean uh, uh, is, in, is in the schools. And about the uh, children who ride the bus, I was talking to one of the bus drivers. There are seat belts in the bus, but the kids don't use them, and and the bus driver doesn't do anything about it. So uh, it, it's just one problem on top of another. One day, this uh, student was on the way back from the cafeteria. By the way, all the students can't fit in the cafeteria and stay six feet apart. So they have many of the classrooms walking in a file line to the cafeteria, picking up their tray and then walking back to the classroom and eating in the classroom. So many times, you know, students drop the tray on the way and, you know, make a mess in the, in the hallway outside. And one day this student, the uh, drop some uh, part of her tray there and I and I told her listen go back in the cafeteria get another tray and uh, tell someone there that you know where it's dropped so they could send someone to clean it up 
So she did that, and on the way back to the room, there were there were several teachers and several high end staff people surrounding her. I mean, it was like six people, you know, yelling at her and and, and acting angry. Uh, why didn't you clean up this tray that, that you dropped? You know, our line of, of kids had to all stop because your tray was, was dropped on the floor. You know, what is that all about? I mean, would you like to be standing there and, and all these adults, you know, reprimanding you? I mean, it, it was awful. And anyway, the girl did... What I told her to do, she went and got another tray and she told the cafeteria worker to send someone to clean it up. How could she possibly clean it up herself? She, she doesn't carry a garbage bag with her. She doesn't have gloves on. And then if she would have dirtied her hands touching the ground out there in the open air hallway to pick up the tray, where is she supposed to wash her hands? Should she take those same hands that she was touching the ground with? and go in the cafeteria and touch a, a new clean tray. Anyway, there was there was so many so many incidents there in the three months that I worked there. Um, the rest of the year now there is um, they're mostly doing state, you know, standardized testing. And plus that um, they told me they won't need me yet next year. They can't uh, give me a job next year because they're because of funding, they're having staff cuts, and plus, you know, me having only 15 minutes of the actual translating, which was the job that I accepted, translating, I decided to, you know, not wait till the end of the school year and just, um, you know, finish that now and not go back there. So I officially resigned and they accepted my <coughs> resignation. Um, it was wonderful being with the kids. I missed them very much. And and it was horrible for being with most being with most of the staff. Um, I I don't understand how they could work um, with children and, and, and be angry most of the time and be mean and 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 they, they stick up for each other. Um, if one tells a lie, the, the other um, <laughs> goes along with it. I, their priority seems to, you know, keep the income, keep their job, uh, look good, um, keep their medical insurance. And their priority is not ethics and being a good example for children. And... I, I I don't know what's happening to society. I mean, it, it's so sad. And what can I do? I'm not I'm not going to be in a place where there's so many illegal things going on. I stay far away from anything illegal. I love laws. They're they're rules. They're they're there to protect us. And I just want you all to think about it, you know, that you're sending your kids to be with strangers. Now, if they were the kind of teachers I had back in the 50s, in the 60s also, great. But they're not. I don't know what's going on. So please think about it. I know um, the, the bureaucratic system, even with homeschooling, can be a hassle, but it's better than the alternative. I mean, anything goes in those schools, anything. I, I've even, I've even seen uh, teachers, you know, you know, they're, they're angry at the student, they want them to walk a certain way, and instead of just telling them, you know, go over there, they'll like, you know, push them a little on their shoulder. I mean, you, you don't touch somebody's kid. I mean, you don't touch anybody without their permission. So, uh, you know, keep this in mind. And, um, oh, one more thing. I, um, I saw some cracks in one of the classrooms I was babysitting in. Not babysitting. This was a class where students are in the school, but they have a Chromebook in front of them. And the teacher is 
in the front of the class. She can't see what they're looking at at the screen. So my job was to just stand there for, uh, let me see, for 40 minutes and make sure they're not on YouTube, make sure they're on the page the teacher's on. Anyway, while I was there, you know, I'm not doing much, just looking at their screens. And I notice in the corner, there's these very large cracks uh, going into the roof and, and also on the wall. So I reported it and I said, you know, I was concerned about um, possible sinkholes. There's like three, four different cracks there. You know, maybe you could have it checked out. So a while later, like a few weeks, I noticed that those cracks were patched up with, with plaster. So, and I found out that they didn't check it, you know. Somebody told somebody else, ah, there's no, um, there's no sinkholes in this neighborhood. <laughs> the, the, whole, uh, the whole county that we're in is, is very high incidence of sinkholes. So instead of checking it, which is no big deal, you call some company, they come and look at it, they give you an opinion, yes or no. Um, but they just plastered it over. So I don't know, I don't even know how many different types of uh, dangers are in the school. I, I can't even, I can't even fathom it. I know they're not so careful with the gates. They don't always leave them locked like they're supposed to. And... Um, <clears throat> I, I just don't, what else can I say? Please think about, you know, what you're dealing with, um, everything I've said. And, um, you know, think about homeschooling. You don't have to be a teacher to have homeschooling. You just have to, you know, keep track of what you're teaching them and, you know, have a portfolio or something. There's places online that tell you how to do that. And, um... I'm praying. I'm praying for the for the kids. I'm praying for the world. What else can I do? Please think about it.